Hi guys, in this video, I'm going to talk about classical decomposition of a time series. So when we have a time series, usually we want to decompose it into three main components, um, the trend, the seasonality, and the remainder, the residual, what is left after we take out the trend and seasonality. So for example, suppose we have this time series and it looks something like this. And so the trend will be more or less the general direction of where the time series goes. The seasonality will be, I don't know, maybe you have high sales in summer, low sales in winter, or some um, fluctuations around your uh, Y value. And these fluctuations have to be in a constant period. So, so for example, it can be quarters of a year. So every four quarters, it repeats itself. You have mid sales in autumn and spring, but high sales in summer and low sales in winter, for example. It can be, if your data is daily, then the period will be seven days or uh, maybe 365 days. Uh, if your data is monthly, then your seasonality will have a period of 12 months, maybe. So every 12 observation, it will repeat itself. Yeah, so the seasonality part, if we draw it on a different scale, might look like something like this. So, yeah, so it's something that stays constant uh, through each period. Yeah, so we have these periods and it repeats itself. And the remainder is the general error, the white noise error that is left after you take out the trend in seasonality. So for classical decomposition, you have two ways of doing it. You have the additive model and you have the multiplicative model. So in the additive model, your, your value, the value that uh, you are trying to model, decomposes into the sum of the trend, the seasonality, and the residuals. And how classical decomposition models the trend, it just does a moving average to find a trend. So I know that this is not the same as the moving average of a RIMA, which we will discuss in another video. So what it does, is suppose we are trying to model the value here, it takes a window of the value from here and here and uh, does an average of them. And we will get the value here yeah, after we took into consideration all of these uh, values. And so this is moving average. What uh, the classical decomposition does, it does a moving average of M, of the, of the period of the seasonality. So if you have quarterly data and you assume your seasonality is four, then it takes a moving average of size four. Usually it's preferred to have the current time step in the middle, which means that the average uh, will be symmetric. The, the point where you are measuring the moving average will have, I don't know, three before or three after, but this doesn't happen if M is even. For example, if your um, data is quarterly or monthly. And here's the example. So if you have a, a seasonality with a period of three, then the moving average, the, the current time step that you are predicting is exactly centered. So we are predicting the trend at time T and notice it's exactly, the, the value at time T is exactly in the middle. So this is what it means for the average to be symmetric. But if you have uh, M equal four, then you have two ways of doing that. Either you uh, take one time period before and two times periods after the current time period, or you take two time periods before and one time period after the current time period. And one way to overcome this is to do double moving average. So moving average of a moving average. For example, two times four moving average would mean take this and this and average them. Okay, so this is exactly what I do here. I notice this is what you get. And you get, again, that the current value is exactly in the middle, right? Because we are looking at time t, at small t, at the trend at time t. So the current value is exactly in the middle. And then you have two from the opposite sides, a window of two from before and two after. And notice that here, this value and this value correspond to the same quarter. So basically you are averaging the quarter of t minus two and t plus two. And this is why they get an eighth each instead of a quarter. And notice also that in this case, since we have a window, the first values 
of this entire line and the last value of this time series will be missing. And this is one of the shortcomings of simple decomposition. Okay, so this is how you compute the trend. How do you compute the seasonality? Well, you detrend the series, you take the series and you uh, subtract the trend, and then you average each seasonal period. So for example, each quarter. So if your data is quarterly, you take all the first quarters of the detrended series, and uh, you take the average of that. Same for the second quarter, same for the third quarter, and same for the fourth quarter. And then after you do all that, you also subtract the mean of all of them so that you center them around zero. So when you add all the seasonal parts in this additive model, they sum up to zero. And then the remainder or the residual is just simply what's left. You take the series, you subtract the trend and subtract the seasonality and what you get is the residual. And the mean of the residual should be around zero. Uh, but if we use multiplicative data, the mean will be different. If we use additive model on data that is not additive, that is multiplicative, then the mean won't be zero, as we will see. So let's switch into R. I'm using this library, Forecasting Principles and Practice 3rd Edition, which is an online book. And I'm using it to take the data and also show you how to uh, do stuff in an automatically, but I will also do stuff manually. So we are going to take this data set uh, that contains US employment data, and we are going to take only data from 1990 upwards and only data of employment in the retail section. Okay, so this is what it does. The frequency of our data, as we see, is 12. So we have monthly data. We have 357 observations. And we'll just take the X and the Y. The Y will be the number of employed uh, each month. And now we, are want, we want to model the Y. We want to decompose the Y. So let's do an additive decomposition. And let's calculate it manually. So we'll initiate a trend vector. And then we'll loop through our window. Um, and notice that we have to, again, we have some values in the beginning and in the end that are missing, they won't have a value. And then we do a double moving average. And we do that because our M is 12, it's even, it's not odd. So we'll do that. Then we take the detrended series and we calculate the seasonality. After we calculate the average of each month, we center all the seasonal components such that they have a mean zero and such that they sum to zero. We repeat the seasonal parts across the entire data set and we calculate the remainder. Okay, and now we can put everything in this um, data frame object called Siebel. And this is our manual version. We can also calculate everything automatically by simply uh, casting the data uh, into a model and choosing classical decomposition type additive and then taking the components, this will be the automatic. Actually, this uses the FPP3 commands, but we could also use the base R decompose, uh, giving the, give it the frequency and say additive, and it will also work. And now we can compare both versions, and we see that uh, both versions give the exact same values. So the way we did it manually is equal to the way that uh, R does it automatically but we only did it algebraically, let's, let's plot it. Okay, so let's see how it looks. Okay, so this is how it looks. This is the time series that we actually have. This is the trend that is calculated using moving average. You can see that it doesn't start, the first six values here are missing and the same for the last six values here, okay? And this is the seasonality part. It will repeat every 12, months so we can see we have here seasonality parts and then it just repeats and this is the remainder this is basically the noise that is left after we account for the trend and seasonality in our data we can also plot it using base r but it will look much worse and also there's a way instead of writing this a bit complicated uh ggplot code where we have to transform the data into having this factor for each uh, element in our columns, basically casting the columns into rows, making um, our wide 
data into a long data, and then using the facet grid to create these four plots, we can simply take the data and cast it into auto plot and get the same thing. So this is a much simpler way to do it. So this was the additive model. We also have the multiplicative model. Here, the only difference is that instead of y being equal to the sum of these three components, y is equal to the product of these three components. The trend is calculated exactly the same as before. The seasonality part is also calculated very similar, only that the trended series now is not y minus the trend, it's y divided by the trend. So the detrended series becomes y divided by the trend. And then after calculating the average of each seasonal uh, component, we center it around one. So we center it not around zero, we center it around one because uh, we want the multiplication uh, to be on average one. And the remainder, instead of taking y and subtracting the trend and seasonality, we, we are dividing by the trend times the seasonality. And notice that if we take a log transform of this model, uh, we are getting basically an additive model. So let's see this in code. So the automatic is very simple. We are just doing the same. And instead of saying type additive, we are specifying type multiplicative. Manually, it's also the same. The trend is exactly the same. Uh, the detrended series is now y divided by the trend. Uh, the seasonality is calculated the same, only centering it, we are adding one. And then we repeat the seasonal parts and the remainder is, and the remainder is y divided by the trend times the seasonality. And now you can check if everything is equal and we see that it is. And actually let's also plot the model. So yeah, this is how the model will look. Uh, it looks more or less the same. The scales here are different. So here notice that it's around one, the seasonality part is around one, and it doesn't move so much. Um, the same for the random part, where here uh, the seasonal parts go from minus 200 to 600, and the re uh, random part also uh, fluctuates quite a lot. So which model is appropriate, the additive one or the multiplicative one? Well, if you have a series where the seasonal part seems to grow um, as a function of the trend or to become smaller as a function of the trend if the trend is down, then you probably should use the multiplicative model. This is how it looks. You see the trend goes up and as the trend goes up, the seasonality also goes up. So here the seasonality part is relatively small, but here it suddenly fluctuates much more. So if this is the case, use the multiplicative model. Uh, but if it's more or less constant, like in this graph, you see there's fluctuations, but they don't seem to grow as the trend grows. So uh, for this type of data, use the additive model. And finally, I want to show what happens if you create data that is, that is multiplicative like this, and then you decompose it with an additive model. Uh, well, the mean now of the random vector won't be zero, okay? So the random part, the random component of this decomposition won't be zero. And if we plot this, we get something that looks like this. Yeah, and you can see this is the series. The trend looks okay. The seasonality part, I don't know, looks decent. Uh, but look at the remainder. You can see that there's like big fluctuations here and then smaller here and then big fluctuations here. So, so it seems like there's some problems with the model. Yeah, because the remainder part does not look like a white noise maybe we can use a better model. Okay, so this is all for this video, guys. I hope you enjoy it and see you in the next one.